Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I'm gonna do an announcement video. I feel like I've been doing a lot of those recently. Hopefully this will be the last one in a while. Uh, but it is to announce a new reading project that I am part of and it is called Invisible Cities. This is a reading project that I am doing together with a group of people and the idea behind it, the purpose of this reading project is to promote translated literature within the bookish community. The structure of this is that with each month we will be choosing three countries um, and we will be reading and discussing books from that country each month. Uh, so in January 2021 we start with three countries and uh, move on through the world um, as the year progresses. The focus will be on translated literature specifically, uh, but we will also be taking part in other forms of uh, the country's culture, such as uh, movies or food or music, other forms that you can explore the countries that are sort of thematically um, relevant for the month itself. I think it will be a really fun and exciting project uh, and we would love to have you join us. There is a few uh, different ways that you can join us. Of course you can uh, make, your own, make your own content and talk about books you are reading from the countries by using the hashtag Invisible Cities Project uh, so that we can find your things on the various social media platforms that you use. Um, um, there is also a Discord that will be linked below where a lot of various discussions will be going on uh, related to the month's countries and there's also a lot of resources there uh, to help you out in finding books and movies and other things as well. Uh, there is an Instagram account that um, and all of the hosts will be using to uh, spread uh, discussion around this project. As I said, we are a, a group of people involved in this. We have Stephanie, Yamini, Nicole, Agnes, Michael and Will and myself. Uh, so we're quite a few people and all of us uh, except for Will are um, on booktube. Uh, all of us have YouTube channels. Will has a book blog that he will be doing uh, Invisible Cities related content over on his blog. So I will link all of our um, links below and definitely go follow all of these people so you can uh, see what they will be reading uh, related to this project as we go along. So for me personally there are two things that makes me very excited to, uh, to do Invisible Cities. Um, the first thing is of course that one of my reading goals for 2020 was to read more wildly, um, more international literature it ended up not being something that I really worked on. It, I sort of had that in, my, in the back of my mind in the beginning of the year, but then the year ended up being what it was. And it was just sort of a priority that um, got lost in the various other projects that I was doing. So doing this Invisible Cities reading project, I think, um, is perfect for me because that is definitely something that I want to make sure I prioritize in my reading in the next year. And um, it's something that I really care about, reading more translated literature and reading more outside of the uh, English-speaking um, uh, countries uh, is something that I've always cared about. So for me, um, it sort of fits well with my personal reading goals as well. Um, but the, the other part of it is just that it feels very timely. Of course, 2020 has been such a weird year, but I think one of the things that I've definitely found is that it has highlighted how global the world is and how both um, sort of country boundaries um, seem very insignificant when we have world problems, both related to the pandemic, related to racism, related to uh, environmental problems, all of these things um, affect us all and because it's a global world. For me this project feels like something that is sort of connecting with the meaning and the importance in understanding the cultures around us, understanding the world outside of our own national borders. And so it's something that I feel like uh, I both uh, am 
uh, excited to do on my own, but I also really believe in it. Uh, so I hope that you will be interested in joining us as well. And read one book, watch one movie, do anything related to this project, um, and make sure that you uh, use the hashtag if you're on social media, or um, join us in the Discord. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, so that was the information bit of this. So January is the first month that we'll be we will be doing for Invisible Cities. We will be announcing the countries for each month two months in advance always so that you have time to gather uh, books for your TBRs and things if you are planning to participate. Um, and yeah, so January's countries are Morocco, Japan and Argentina. Uh, I'm really excited about all these three countries and I selected uh, two books for each of the countries um, that I will probably or possibly be reading. Uh, we'll see, it depends on what I'm in the mood for when January actually comes around. For Morocco, I will probably be using my library for one of the books and that is Le Jour de Roi, um, The King's Day basically, and uh, it is by Abdella Taya. Uh, this has not been translated into English as far as I know, but it has been translated into um, Swedish, so that is what I'm planning to read it in. Um, this is a book about two young boys and one of them is rich, one of them is poor. They have uh, a friendship but it so starts to change when one of them, uh, I think the rich one, sort of is um, brought up in status because of a prestigious thing that he's um, sort of received in connection with a king uh, coming to visit their town. Uh, and so I think it's about their relationship and the way that it changes when the power dynamics or the, the status between them changes and sort of how they deal with this um, change. It gives me some My Brilliant Friend uh, by Elena Ferrante vibes uh, with uh, male characters, so I'm quite interested in this one. I thought it sounded really good. Uh, this author also has several other books that have been translated into Swedish and many of them are available in English as well. Um, but this one particularly piqued my interest. And then there's another one that I'm really interested in and that I might actually be buying because I don't think my library has a copy of it. It is The Hospital by Ahmed Bu Buanani and this is translated by Lair Laura Vergnaud and Anna Della Subin. So this one is compared to a Persian classic, which is one of the things that made me curious about it, uh, sort of comparisons to Kafka and uh, Thomas Mann. It seems like it's sort of a, um, not a gothic, but a, like a dark horror-esque uh, story set in a hospital and things go awry. It Also, the description of this sort of reminds me a little bit of Blindness by uh, José Aristaramago. Um, I didn't finish that one, but the parts that I read sort of um, sounds a bit similar in the plot of this. Based on Banani's own experiences as a tuberculosis patient, the hospital begins to feel increasingly like a prison or a strange nightmare. The living resemble the dead, bureaucratic angels of death descend to direct traffic, claiming the lives of a motley cast of inmates one by one. Childhood memories and fantasies of resurrection flash in and out of the narrator's consciousness as the hospital transforms before his eyes into an eerie, metaphorical space. The two books that I have as options for Argentina on my shelves is Optic Nerve by Maria Gainza, and this is translated by... Uh, Thomas Bunstead. This is a book about a woman observing art. That is basically what I know about the story of this. I think it's just about her um, sort of observing art and seeing herself reflected in art. So the description says, a woman searches Buenos Aires for the paintings that are her inspiration and her refuge. Her life, she is a young mother with a complicated family, is sometimes overwhelming, but among the canvases, often little known works in quiet rooms, she finds clarity and a sense of who she is. Uh, I really love uh, fiction related to art and sort of art observations, so uh, that seems to be the case with this one, and so I've been really excited to read it since I got it, I think last year? The other one is The Adventures of China Iron by Gabriela K. 
Cabezon Camara, translated uh, by Fiona McIntosh and Iona McIntyre. This was one of the books that was shortlisted for the Booker International this year, and it's a retelling of an Argentinian folktale, I think. With humor and sophistication, Gabriela Cabezon Camara has created a joyful, hallucinatory novel that is also an incisive critique of national myths. So the Argentinian, or basically I think the Latin American um, fiction in translation that I've read so far, I've pretty much liked all of it, I think. Um, so I think... Uh, there's a good chance that I will like this one. Um, from from the vibe I've got of this and the reviews that I've seen, I think I'll like it. Last up we have uh, Japan. So uh, for Japan, the two that I have my eye on to read is um, The Sailor Who Fell From Grace, uh, From Grace With The Sea by Yukio Mishima, translated by... John Nathan. Uh, I don't really know much about this particular book, although the description reminds me of The Lord of the Flies, sort of a that kind of story, uh, with a lot of teenage boys and violence ensues in, in their own sort of um, hierarchy within um, the group. But the main reason I have uh, I have this on my shelf in the first place is because I read Yukio Mishima's um, The Temple of the Golden Pavilion a few years back and it's one of his lesser known books but I really enjoyed his writing style and so I bought this and one of his other books as well. So I probably will read one of his books in January. We'll see which one I actually end up reading. Uh, but this is uh, a poten potential book for January. The other one I am fairly certain I will be reading and that is The Great Passage uh, by Shion Miura, translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter. Uh, she also translated the Minae Mizumura book, um, The Fall of Langu Language in the Age of English, that I mentioned a few times and that I love. Um, I really want to read more of Minae Mizumura and if I have the, um, if I can uh, track down her other books, uh, especially the Wuthering Heights retelling, I might just read that in January. If I, if I can get my hands on it in time. Um, but this one is about a lexicographer. So it starts off with him working in a sales job and being sort of scouted as a lexicographer. And so this book follows him and his team of lexicographers creating a dictionary and his everyday life and sort of the love for language and that kind of thing in general. Uh, I have seen the adaptation of this in the anime version and I really loved it. So I'm fairly certain I will love this book as well. I've been uh, meaning to read it this entire year, so uh, now that I know this is coming up with January, I will just set it aside uh, and have the perfect <laughs> reason to finally get to it. So those are the books that I am probably be uh, that I am thinking of reading for January 2021 for the first month of Invisible Cities. So I hope that you will be interested in joining us. As I said, all of the information with the links and everything will be found below with our social media. Um, uh, accounts and the discord as well. That is all I wanted to say today. I hope you're doing well and you're taking care of yourselves. I will talk to you soon.